Hey everybody, welcome back to the Beamer Barn. Today we're gonna to be doing a full detailing session on my 335i wagon and hopefully getting rid of some scratches and little paint chips that we have on the rear quarter panel. So I'm gonna show you all the supplies that you're gonna to need to do this on your BMW at home. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. So before we can get into removing some of the scratches and swirl marks, we need to do a super basic car wash on the car. And of course this thing hasn't been washed in a while, so we're gonna go ahead and grab the bucket. I love to use the Meguiar's Gold Car Soap. It has kind of like a wash and wax, but since we're gonna be clay barring the car today, it's gonna remove any like wax film and stuff later. So we're not really worried about what type of car soap we use. Although sometimes people prefer to use dish soap because that has the strongest effect of removing any surface wax or ceramic coating that your paint might have before you do a clay bar and a polish. And here in Florida, it's so hot that we have to wash our cars different body panels at a time, otherwise the soap will dry up on it. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the car into the garage while it's still wet, and that's gonna let us do the clay barring procedure. The clay bar is a little piece of putty and basically you just run it over the surface of your paint, of course, when it's lubricated and I like to use a little bit of car soap and then some water, but by running it over the surface of the clear coat, it actually removes any small dirt particles that have been embedded into the paint over time. And as you can see, the perfectly white putty turns brown as it starts to accumulate and a lot of this i think here in florida is the pollen getting embedded into the paint and that of course changes the color of the car the tint of the clear coat and by removing that you're going to get a much deeper color out of the car but keep in mind that doing this does end up scratching the paint and that's why we have to polish it afterwards So now we're about halfway through detailing this car and before we move on to the polishing step I want to show you guys a couple of scratches on the side of the car here These have been here since I bought it and they just really kind of set off the look of the car when I saw it I wasn't expecting them to be along the entire side But you'll see that they're actually not really embedded into the paint That's something that I realized recently and you can test it by running a finger along where the scratch is And if it feels like your finger is running on top of something like something's on top of the paint then you are in good luck because that means that you can actually remove scratches like this without any paint or any any additional supplies so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grab a clay bar and that should hopefully clean off the surface here remove the scuff it might leave a little bit of shadowing but in the next step when we get to polishing the paint that should go away on its own completely the only other thing that I'm worried about is some of these little chips and dents it looks like someone attacked this car with a BB gun and shot off all these little marks in. So what really sets it off is the chips of paint that are missing. Honestly, they're not too dented far into the door here. The door is pretty thick metal, but it is enough with all the chips that it makes it kind of unsightly. And it goes into the door handle as well. And then we have another one on the back of the trunk here. This is like a deeper scratch and it's even got a little bit of rust in the bottom of it there. So what I'm thinking is once we do get the car fully polished up, we can go into those scratches. We probably want to remove some of that rust and add like some you know rust safe primer but I think that we want to fill in those scratches with some touch-up paint and that should make them look a lot better from a distance maybe not far up but you know what this car it might just be a 10 footer but what do you expect after 200,000 miles it is gonna have some signs of use and honestly it gives more character to the car so let's go ahead now and try to get rid of those scratches and then we'll move on to the next step of the process Now it definitely looked like with even some heavier clay polishing focus in the area on the scuff, it doesn't want to come out yet. Although I, meh, it might be a little bit more faded than it was before. Now I think that we're just going to move on to the next step of polishing the car. I'll show you guys what I like to use and then we'll get right into it and we'll pay a closer attention to this spot. And if we need to, we could do a little bit of wet sanding, like let's say with 3000 grit paper, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. Hopefully it just comes out with a little bit of buffing. Now in front of me, I have everything 
we need to do our polishing today. And a couple of products here I'm gonna recommend. I love to use the Meguiar's Ultimate Compound and they do make a ultimate polish to follow up with that, but I don't usually go with the polish afterwards because the compound combined with a Meguiar's microfiber pad just looks so, so good. Although maybe if your car was black or like a deeper color, I would recommend going to the polish, but I think today we're just going to do the compound. And then right here we have a more generic orbital polisher it's called and this is great because it adds in like a random vibration motion to the spin of this pad so you don't get any like buffing marks in the paint and something like this is very affordable around that $60 price point I'll put it down in the description below the one that I have here and I would definitely recommend you guys get a setup similar to this if you're gonna be doing any paint work on your car Now you're seeing me overload this microfiber pad with a ton of compound right now. And you only wanna do that when you first start doing a polish on your car because the pad is dry and it doesn't have any material in it. After that first initial pad, you're just gonna to need to use a couple of drops of compound when you get to polishing the car. Now, as far as results go, I did a test spot here because you kind of want to see, you know, what sort of effort is gonna yield what sort of results. And I was pretty happy to see a lot of the hazing on the original paint that you can see here gone away. So that gave me the confidence to do the rest of the hood and then kind of blend between both sides and actually go a little bit harder than I was before because I figured this is a BMW clear coat and it can probably take it. And then we'll show you guys the results here in a second. Now we did a test spot on the right side of the hood and then we went and did the rest of the hood here just to see what sort of results we can expect. And while we might not be able to get some of the deeper scratches out of the paint, we did get a lot of the micro scratches, the you know swirl marks that you get from washing the car, those removed. And bringing a fresh layer of clear coat to the surface allows our color to pop a lot better. So while these results might not be anything to brag about and they're not professional by any means, it is gonna make the car look a lot better. And the bigger things that I'm worried about are gonna be some of the marks that are ingrained into the paint on the sides. Now, I would consider this to be water marks or maybe acid rain marks. The car was probably stored outside for a majority of its life, and for that reason, and not having been washed, we do have this light ghosting of water marks into the paint. So I can't get that out by rubbing it out or anything. It is ingrained in there, but it's hopefully gonna come out when we polish it, or at least it is gonna become a lot less noticeable. And then the biggest thing is gonna be the scratches that we talked about already up here. And I'm thinking that these things, with some focused polishing, these are gonna come out all the way and should bring a lot more life into this side of the car. Now here I taped off half of the door so I could just buff one side and show you guys what sort of results you can expect and how much better the clear coat looks. But then wouldn't you know, I started having issues with my orbital polisher. You know, this thing is a couple of years old and I've done so many cars with it. So for the $60 I paid, this was just a matter of time. Now, as you saw, I did a side-by-side -side here using some masking tape, and you can see there's definitely a line difference between the watermarks that are embedded in the clear coat and where I polish because it's a lot clearer. I could probably go a little bit longer, a little bit deeper, but the problem is that my orbital polisher just broke. So as you can see, I took it apart here, and it looks like it's literally sparking inside of there when I turn it on and turn the motor on. I'm not sure if it's supposed to do that. It could just be like a faulty switch, which is what a lot of people complain about when you buy these new and they're not working but it's been two years with this orbital polisher and for the $50 that I paid for it I have to say it's definitely put in its work but unfortunately since I can't get one on Amazon today we're gonna go ahead and borrow Alex's orbital polisher so my best friend Alex he went and borrowed me this and I'll be using it to finish the rest of the car here we're gonna see how good it is it's a Roops brand which I heard is a pretty expensive orbital polisher but this should get us through the rest of the car and that way I can show you guys how to remove these scratches on the side of the quarter panel here. Now this new orbital polisher ended up working really well. Shout out to Alex for letting us use it. 
and as you can see it totally melted away the scratches that we had on our paint now as i said before if you wanted to get better results out of this you could pull out the wet sander you know a little bit of 3000 grit paper and really smooth down the clear coat surface but if you don't do that like i did it's really just going to make the scratch go away and then from certain angles you might be able to see that it was there in the past of course i was super impressed with these results i even went on and did half of the hood to show you guys what sort of results you can expect and as you can see they are just night and day different So now we're all done polishing up the car. And remember that the more you put into this sort of work, the more you're gonna get out of it. Personally, I've learned that it's really only worth my time to get most of the fading out of the clear coat to make the real color pop from the car, but someone else might want to go the next step and start wet sanding it and getting out more of the scratches. You could use a deeper cut of a compound in order to make your pad more effective on the clear coat, but then you risk running through the clear coat and into the paint and you don't want to do that because there's no going back from that. But now what we're going to do, since we got that scratch out and it's looking really clean on this side of the car, I want to go ahead and take a look at these little BB pellet marks. So what we're doing isn't anything new we're just going to be using some touch-up paint in order to fill in those chips now what i have here is some leftovers from when we painted the rear spoiler but you can get touch-up paint from your dealership if you give them your vin number and they'll give you enough to do something like what we're about to do today now i do have a couple of paint chips with some rust some surface rust showing so i'm going to use a little bit of primer to go over that rust first and then we'll go over it with some of the touch-up paint just because i think the primer from rust oleum is going to do a better job of preventing that rust from bubbling up more in the future so the most important thing though here is going to be our tool and while some of you guys might think to use the touch-up paintbrush which comes when you buy something from the dealership what I've been taught is to use a pick like this to drop on little droplets of paint onto your chip to fill it in slowly instead of trying to brush anything on so this is all that we're gonna need we're gonna use the lid to hold a little bit of paint that we can dab this into and then for the spray can we can go ahead and and use the cap spray a little bit of paint in there and then dab in there as well and that is going to transfer the paint onto our surface and hopefully start filling it in so let's go ahead and try it out on this huge scratch that we have on the rear trunk of my car you can see that there's some surface rust at the bottom so we're going to use a little bit of that black primer on the rust and then after practicing there we'll move on to the other side So instead of putting the primer directly onto the rust, I figured I had a better shot if I went and tried to remove some of that surface rust first. And so using the pick, I kind of just got it off and then a little bit of a wipe with a napkin and it's ready for us to paint. Now, this is the black primer going on first. You can see that, you know, sped up, it actually dries pretty fast behind me as I put it down. And then now we're able to move on to the sparkling graphite silver which is the color match paint that i have for my car and this filled into the crack looks a ton better than it did before and for that reason we're going to go ahead and do the rest of these little cracks on the door handle and then on the door itself Now what I'm gonna do is use a little bit of alcohol and then a magic eraser sponge. And this is gonna help me flatten down those chips where we just tried to fill them in with the touch up paint. So that way it's not dripping over the sides and looking real obvious. So the end result here is good, not great, definitely not perfect, but when you stand back, you definitely don't notice the chips as easily. When you look up closer, the dents are still there, the chips are still there, but at least they are color matched and they don't stand out as much as they did before. That combined with polishing out those scratches has left this side a lot better looking and I'll say this was the ugly side of the car before. Now it doesn't even look that bad, but the next owner, if they decide to remove those dents there, I think it might be able to be done with P and then you just have the chips or you go ahead and repaint the door but again this car does have 200,000 miles and it's gonna show it so that's gonna conclude our video for today and the results are pretty nice I'll have to say the paint definitely pops a little bit better on this BMW and I think it's ready for us to take some photos and uh, get ready to list it for sale soon so if you enjoyed this video be sure to leave a like or maybe a comment down below especially if you have any recommendations on orbital polishers because I'm definitely gonna be looking to get a new one for now but if you haven't yet be sure to subscribe 
subscribe to the channel and as always I hope you guys have an amazing day we'll see you next time